you're gonna show me something that's been done, you better do it better than the rest. She's got short hair. whoop de doo Brava, brava. Girl, have you ever been to a rave? Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race UK vs. The World Season 2, Episode 2, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And don't forget to wait till the end because I will be letting you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. This week, we are having a ball, but not only an ordinary ball, a happy ending ball. This week, the queens must give us not one, not two, but three looks. And all of them are in the fairy tale theme. First look is gonna be Lady Prince Charming, a twisted take on the male hero. The second look is Shevel Queen, where the queens must give us their interpretation of a twisted evil queen. And the third look is Drags to Riches, where the queens must use a bunch of discarded materials to create a third look in the workroom, but not any ordinary look, a ball gown, baby. With three looks, 10 queens, buckle up, we got a long episode for you. So let's get into it. Up first, it's Hannah Conda, and Hannah Conda for her Lady Prince Charming look is coming out in this green and pink attire. She's giving you that camp old prince. It's giving you a little bit of that Disney flair, but making it very gay, honey. She got this green cape with this green crown and this big fluffy mustache. When it comes to this category, Lady Prince Charming, you're gonna have to do a little bit extra because they're all men out of drag, so if they're gonna do male drag, they gotta do it over the top, exaggerate it, and really make it fun. I would say that it is definitely giving you Drag the King vibes, and we always said we needed some Drag Kings on Drag Race, so if this is the way to uh, tease the audience into it, then I kind of love it. I, I'm, I'm hoping that was for. But enough about the category, let's get back into Hanaconda. Hanaconda is definitely giving you the camp old time. She's giving you the prince. He's a little bit Disney, he's a little bit gay, he's a little bit all over the place, and I love it. This is exactly what you need to be doing in a category like this. And I love every minute of it, and that is why she's getting me. Bam! For her Shevel Queen look, Hanaconda is coming out as a more traditional evil queen witch. She's coming out in this blue dress with this beaded black overcoat onto it with the headpiece and the witch's wand. This is not the most original look. It is definitely giving you traditional evil queen, but the good part about it is that everybody else was going so conceptual that nobody did anything like this. So she was able to keep in her own lane. As well, we also know that Hanaconda likes these sort of more traditional things and it definitely feels like it's part of her and it definitely feels like this is how Hanaconda would do it and that's why she did it that way. The beaded fabric looks super expensive and super rich. Uh, the blue dress underneath got that little pop of color while still maintaining that sort of evilness vibes to it. All in all, it is well made and well thought through and maybe a little soft on this runway, but still very glamorous. And that is why Hanaconda for her second look is gonna get a fun. For her third look, the, her rags to riches, eleganza, ball gown look, Hanaconda is coming out as the princess of the mice. She said that she is giving you uh, a little bit of camp and is definitely not giving you glamour. And I agree. This is definitely giving you story and definitely giving you camp. I also like that she paired the colors with the prints that she did on the first runway and it, it kind of worked together. Now, the fashion itself is a little bit e. Eh. I think that the, the colors she chose are really hard to work with. Personally, I think that this would have worked a lot better had the whole thing just been done in pink with some green edging to it. And then she could have kept all the mice like running up her skirt and it would have given you that camp factor. Uh, I think that 
I don't know if it was the lack of materials or lack of creativity or the fact that she was really wanted to go with this color scheme that really held her back. From a story point, point of view, I think it is great, but from a execution point of view, um, it's just not there for me. And it's for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a draft. <laughs> Next up, it's Jomber's Blonde. And Jomber's Blonde, for her Lady Prince Charming look, is coming out as Prince Farming, the farmer's boy turned prince. She's wearing this brown plaid skirt with this ruffled details and big puffy sleeves. She's paired it with this mohawk, and it's definitely giving you that Vivian Westwood vibes. I think it's definitely feeling a little bit more punk than it is feeling a little bit more farmer, but either way, it is definitely feeling fashion. Now, the question is, am I getting uh, Lady Prince Charming? And I don't really think so. I'm missing the prince part of it. It, it is definitely feeling drag, and it is definitely feeling uh, great, but I'm not getting the, the prince characteristics in it. That being said, there's a lot of excellent details into it, and it definitely feels expensive. So although it's not following the theme, I always say if you don't follow the theme, you better look good doing it, and Jombers does look good doing it. So, for Jomber's first look, I am definitely going to have to give her a five. And for her second Chival Queen look, Jomber's Blonde is coming out in this black and red flame outfit. Jomber's Blonde says she's giving you 90s Terry Mugler realness. Now, I didn't get that from it, but maybe that's because I'm not that big of a Mugler fan personally. But I did get like flame and dragon and evilness and I love it. This is so good. I was not expecting anything like this from Jobbers. This is much more darker and much more uh, ferocious. Jobbers generally likes to go in more in the sort of like prettier, fashion-y, campier side. So I love this juxtaposition, especially in a ball, because in a ball you have three looks, so you want to switch it up each time um, to a certain degree. I love the high neck piece. I love the high head piece. I love the armor of it all. It definitely feels like storybook, but fashion storybook. And honestly, I wouldn't change a single thing. I want this the way it is. I'm going to go Google who made this outfit afterwards. I think I have an idea who it might be, and she is very expensive, which is who I think it is. But either way, gorgeous, gorgeous gorgeous and a hundred percent and for her drags to riches look jumpers blonde is coming out in this little sparkly dress with this big back piece she said it's inspired by one of her favorite designers la croix I don't know La Croix as a designer, so I will have to Google them after this. But I love that Jobbers is teaching us about fashion with her references. She definitely knows what she's talking about. The question is, does she execute them? Most times I'm like never sure, but this one, 100%. I love that this is like a short mini dress underneath, but also that it's got the big drama of the back piece. You can definitely see this working together or separately. I also like this hair pairing with it because it's definitely giving you more of a like coming off of a Vogue magazine shoot. And I like that she changed up her makeup just enough so that it feels different from the other outfits she showed on the runway. All in all, this is pretty well done and very well thought through. And the fact that she made this in the workroom boggles me because this is pretty amazing. And there's no way I can make something even close to that. So for Miss Jomber's Lawn, for her third look, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Arancha Castilla-La Mancha. And Arancha for her uh, Lady Prince Charming look is coming in as an interpretation of David Bowie. She's got uh, an orange mullet wig and she's paired it with this like red overall pants and black and white shirt. And then she's got her little eye patch with the lightning bolt through it in case you didn't get it. Now I will say from a concept point of view, I like that it's David Bowie. David Bowie, the Prince of Pop, maybe some will say, but it also like the epitome of blending masculine and feminine and really giving you that androgyny look. So that is a particularly great reference. I love a good Bowie reference. The thing is, we've seen a lot of Bowie references done on Drag Race, and I don't mind seeing a new one, but if you're gonna show me something that's been done, you better do it better than the rest. And the question is, did she do it better than the rest? And my answer is no. The thing is, is that this is a ball, so there is multiple looks, so I get that she can't paint a giant lightning bolt on her face, so she went with the patch eye. 
The problem is, is that it's flimsy and it feels cheap. Secondly is the orange wig. The style of the wig is cool. It's definitely giving you Bowie. It's definitely giving you that edge. The problem I have with it is that it's all one color. So therefore it's feeling flat. If it had a different couple of layers of red and orange in there, it would have felt a little bit more elevated and that sort of the part that I'm missing. On top of it, as she walks, uh, you see her undergarments underneath her tights and that's just like not the most professional. If you are gonna have to show some of your undergarments, it would have just been good if she had it lined with some mesh so that it would have blended in a little bit better and then just tightened it so you wouldn't notice. You know, a lot of people uh, do this fake bare skin idea and it's just a matter of doing it and doing it well. All in all, this was a great idea, but poorly done on execution, unfortunately. And that is why for Arancha Castilla Mancha, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give her a draft. For her second look, Arancha Castilla Mancha is coming out as her mean girl's fantasy. She is giving you Regina George, the queen bee. She's coming out in this leather skirt with this pink top that says a little bit dramatic, this pink cape and this giant pink pen. As she turns around, you read that her cape actually says a little book, playing on the burn book aesthetic of Mean Girls, hence the giant pen that she's holding. I think this is very interesting and a really interesting take on the theme. Um, I didn't see uh, Regina George or Mean Girls being very queen, but when she said the queen bee of high school and that bee in school, I was like, oh yeah, that works. As well as it works for Arancha style. Arancha always said that she loves, she loves like Miley Cyrus and Hilary Duff and early 2000s sort of stuff. And this fits within her aesthetic. If you were a drag queen, you've probably seen somebody do some sort of Mean Girls reference over the time, but I like that she made it bigger and much more appropriate for RuPaul's Drag Race. It's definitely giving you the drama that is needed. It's not personally my aesthetic, but I definitely understand where she's going with it and it definitely fits her. And I think it's very well made and, and it's got impact. So for all of those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a five. And for her rags to riches look, Arancha Castilla Mancha is coming out in this black, sequent fabric and she says that she is the emo girl going to prom and doesn't want to be at prom. She is definitely selling this storyline on the runway, being all pouty and wowdy. I will say that I do think that the storyline was a little bit of a stretch. I understand why she decided to go with it because she had this black fabric and uh, she wanted to do like this sort of like very prom attire look. The problem about it is that she doesn't have the right accessories to pull this off. I think that the story works, but she needed to do a bunch of bracelets that had like some spikes on it, a spike collar, and the hair needed to be like two times bigger. It had to be black with maybe a strip of color in it. It makes me think of something that Maddie Morphosis did. That gave me more of the emo fantasy than this did. So from a story point of view, it could have worked had she done the right accessories, but she didn't. The other way she could have taken this is giving you like that 80s prom look and giving you sort of like big hair and sort of like this camp uh, aesthetic. It's definitely missing in the accessorizing story part of it. Now let's look at the dress. It's a fine dress. It works. It's nothing special. It's nothing wow but it's also nothing bad. She used a, a sequence fabric, which really helps make this feel a lot more elevated. I can go either way with this one, so it's gonna be a soft drag. <laughs> Next up, it's Tia Coffee. And Tia Coffee for her Lady Bencharmian look is coming out as Robin Hood. She said that it is a reference to her original runway back on her season where she also did Robin Hood, but this time she is making it more elevated. Initially, as she comes out, I did not get Robin Hood. Robin Hood, to me, is never in red and more in green. It's definitely giving me more Hunger Games and Katniss vibes than it did Robin Hood. And that is sort of the problem. As this is supposed to be a Lady Prince Charming look, it definitely needed to have that masculine edge to it. And Katniss doesn't. I mean, yes, she's a combat person, but she's not a prince. She is a warrior. And that's what this feels like, warrior. I guess that's why she mentions uh, Robin Hood because she needed that male characteristic to come back. But it 
wasn't there. Now the look definitely feels a lot more elevated than the last time she did a Robin Hood look. It's definitely more fitted, more put together, and definitely more avant-garde. I love this hair with it. It definitely brings it that drag moment. The thing is, I wish it was more. Had she done this exact look, but had done it in silver instead of red, it would have definitely given you that knight look. And then she could have been that knight coming to save you, as opposed to right now she's sort of in this in-between. And if she did go in this red tone, I wish it would have been bejeweled to the gods to really elevate it. Now, the real question is though, is it bad? And in my opinion, no, it's not. It's pretty good. It's just with all the competition that we have, it's not the best. But all in all, she looks good. And if she looks good, I'm still going to go ahead and give her a five. And for her second look, Tia Coffee is coming out in this black cape. She rips it open to give you a red latex dress and she's got cherries all over her. She said this is an homage to the very late Cherry Valentine and I think this is such a great touching tribute. Cherry Valentine was an amazing queen and I, and I loved her the minute I saw her and I always wish she would come back for uh, an all-star seasons. Unfortunately, that is not gonna happen as she passed away very recently. Tia decided to pay homage to her friend and give her the respect she deserved on the runway because she was freaking excellent. Now let's get to the look. The problem I have with the look is that I feel Cherry Valentine did it better. I get the reference, but Cherry's mug was stamped. Her, her outfit was so meticulously made. And so you're really comparing yourself to what I think was excellent drag and although I get the reference and this looks really stunning for Tia Coffee, it's not Cherry Valentine. Uh, that said, Tia Coffee looks amazing. I love the concept. I love the idea. I love this aesthetic on her. And I also like that she went red on her first outfit and red on her second one to kind of play off of like the knight and the evil queen that go together. It's got a much more cohesive story. Despite being not as good as the original, I think she looks stunning. It's one of the best looks she's worn. I love the concept, I love the homage, and I think it was really smart. And it is for all of those reasons, for Tia Coffee, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a five. And for her third rags to riches looks, Tia Coffee is coming out in this two-piece red attire. She's got this red skirt with this shiny red band on it, this red top, and this big blonde hair. It's definitely reminding me of her green dress that she did on her season, but way more elevated and this feels a lot more put together. You can see that Tia has taken a sewing lesson or two to get ready for Drag Race because this is meticulously made. On top of it, Tia's styling has come to life because she decided that, you know what, I have this pretty simple dress, so let me give you the biggest hair to really give you that moment. And that moment she did. All in all, this was smartly thought through. It definitely feels much more elevated than her past, and it definitely feels put together. All in all, call me impressed, and I am definitely gonna give this one a five. Next up, it's La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame, for her Lady Prince Charming look, is coming out in this sort of avant-garde police officer, train conductor vibe, and it is such a vibe. I love this this is takes this idea of this sort of masculine uniform and brings it into this like this fashion house look you know i always say people are bringing it au couture but this is true au couture in my opinion i love that it's got a little bit of that scaparelli vibes to it i love that certain aspects are certain are very exaggerated and i love that it is uh, both super elegant in fashion, but also got this like stupid camp side to it, which plays into La Grande Dame's personality. She's not always the, like that serious fashion person, but she is more of like, let's have fun with fashion person. This is something I never knew I needed until I saw it. And now that I saw it, I want it. I don't know where I'll wear it, but I do want it. All in all, this is perfection from head to toe, even down to her little blue boat. Everything matches and is well thought through and the details only La Grande Dame can do the details like she does. All in all, this is freaking fantastic, and I love every minute of it, and that's why she is getting a ah! For her Shivel Queen look, 
uh, La Grande Dame is coming out as the alien queen, the queen from the movie Aliens. She's coming out in these giant big shoulder pieces and she's definitely giving you this sort of character on the runway, giving you very ferocious alien-esque vibes and it is definitely a vibe. It's ironic that we've actually seen these hand things done twice this week because if you watch my episode on the US edition, Q did the same thing but with flowers. I do think it works here a lot better because these hand and feet pieces definitely have a purpose here. They are building this alien character. And now looking at the attire, I do feel like she really relied on all of these pieces because everything around it is quite flat and black. And I say this only because we saw the Alien Queen look done on Drag Race Holland when Chelsea Boyd did the Alien Queen. And when Chelsea Boyd did it, she obviously didn't have the drama of the arms and legs, but definitely had the spine and all of those little intricate details. So I wish that La Grande Dame had taken some of those details and thrown it into this piece uh, because the piece is really cool. That being said, the impact is on the runway. It feels completely different than anything she has done before. And it is definitely giving you that oof feeling that you want when you watch a season like this. All in all, I think it's pretty cool and it is definitely gonna be a bow. And for her third look, La Grande Dame is coming out in this gold dress. She said she is giving Charlize Theron coming out of the pool. Now, I got the reference right away. I think it's from a Paco Rabanne or maybe it's a Dior uh, shoot. And it, she looks stunning. This dress is immaculately made. Now, when people call themselves the fashion queen of the season, I always question it because I'm like, do you buy your fashion? So you just you're good at choosing things. But La Grande Dame is not only good at choosing things, but she's really good at making things. You can see that her eye transcends uh, whatever she does. And she looks so stunning. On top of it, she's paired it with this like really black eye, which I would never do, but it is giving you this very avant-garde or couture way of doing makeup. Like she just came off of a Paris runway show. All in all, this is so smartly done, so well accessorized. Just enough accessories to give you the vibe, but like not too many that it gets overthrown. And she just looks elegant from head to toe. I have no comments but to say, five. Next up, it's Scarlet Envy. And Scarlet Envy for her Lady Prince Charming look is coming out as this battle wounded knight. She said that she is the knight that just came back from fighting a dragon. And you definitely see that with the outfit. It's got this like half female silver attire with this burnt chiffon and burnt material and this knight's hat. Initially, I liked it. Initially, I'm thinking that I, I like the metal pieces, I like the metal hat, and I definitely like the flowiness of it. But I will say that I did feel that it was a little bit too naked for me. I don't mind that she's showing her bare chest as a sort of like man skin to play on this like female male part, but I wish there was something more done to it. For example, had she done some chain mail underneath, I think that would have been really fun. Just to give you a little bit more uh, texture, because I love those metal textures that are coming in. This one really is dependent on the story. If you know the story, you like it. And if you don't know the story, personally, I don't like it. So I think it is very middle of the road. I think had this been on any other season of Drag Race, it would probably still get a fab because the story is so cool and interesting. And actually it looks very well made and very well thought through. But because you're comparing it to this realm of drag queens, it's a hard competition. I could go either way, but considering we're on UK versus the world too, and this is our third time competing, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab on this one. And for her second Evil Queen look, Scarlet Envy is coming out in this green dress with these black tights filled with all of these little veins and paired it with this giant headpiece. She said that she is giving you evil Mother Earth fantasy. I definitely got the evil. I definitely got what she was saying. My initial reaction was that she was doing a play on Hela from uh, Thor, which also had like this green knighted aspects to it. 
regardless of the reference you get it as, it looks stunning. She looks evil, but she looks elegant. She looks rich, but she also looks scary, spooky, and grungy at the same time. All in all, this is detailed from the head down. The headpiece gives you that impact that you want on the runway. The dress is gorgeous on its own. I could totally see her losing the headpiece and using the gown for another look or another piece at some point, maybe going for a Halloween brunch look with it. Who knows, it looks freaking amazing. On top of it, if you look at her body, she's got this beautiful hourglass shape that is like so perfect. You can see that corset is snatched to the gods and it is really amazing. All in all, I love, love, love this look. And it's 100% gonna be a dub. Yeah. And for her third rags to riches eleganza look, Scarlet Envy is coming out as Cinderella. She's coming out in this big light blue ball gown. She said, you want me to give you a ball gown? I'll give you the most iconic ball gown of them all, Miss Cinderella. I think this is so intelligent. This is not at all where I went. I went with it. The problem with doing Cinderella is that we've probably seen Cinderella done so many times and so many times well. And to do it as, as a sewing challenge, girl, you got some big ass balls. But I will say that she pulled this off. Now, I will say that had this gown been the gown she had shown in the runway, it probably wouldn't have been good enough just because it definitely could have used a lot more details. Um, different fabric would have helped, you know, if she just had like a little bit of chiffon and a little bit of jewels into it. But considering she made this in the workroom with the scraps she had, I gotta just say, brava, brava. This looks like something somebody would bring to Drag Race, not even considering that she made this in a day. I also like that she had a storyline. You immediately knew that it was Cinderella. You didn't even need to tell anybody it was Cinderella. You got the reference. Just call me impressed with her sewing skills because she did that. All in all, it is definitely gonna be a bad. Next up, it's Kata Minaj. And Kata Minaj, for her Lady Prince Charming look, is coming in in this sort of half man, half woman look. She literally took the theme and ran with it. She said, Lady Prince Charming, I'm gonna give you the lady and the prince. So on one side, she's got this metal armor that is definitely giving you, I'm the knight and I'm coming to slay. And on the other side, she's got the frilly, girly ruffle attire. It's really funny because this one came out straight after Scarlet Envy and Scarlet Envy also did a metallic look. And since they came out back to back, you had no choice but to compare them. And when you started comparing them, you started to realize how much better Kata, Kata's was than Scarlet. Uh, they both played with the armors, but I do like what Kata had done with the mix and match a little bit. Now, I don't like this pink fabric, but I understand why she used it is to play on the male-female side of it, but I think she could have done it with a little bit more of an elegant fabric. I also like that it's asymmetrical, so that it's not just like a half split in the middle of male and female, because we've seen that done on the runway a few times. So this one does play on pieces of both. All in all, I think this one's pretty good and it is definitely gonna get a ah. For her second look, her evil queen look, Keta Minaj is coming out on this giant creature. Uh, as she turns the runway, you just see the creature's head poke out and she is a queen riding her creature. She's got this giant black headpiece, this black cape and all of the jewels all over her face. It is definitely giving you concept mama. Now we've seen this illusion done a few times, but both times that we've seen them done were done as centaurs. And I'm thinking of Pythia on Canada's Drag Race, or I'm also thinking of Melissa Bianchini on Drag Race Italia. But this one is done in a different way because she's riding the creature. It's definitely giving like, like she'd come out of Star Wars a little bit with her pets. Overall, I love this interpretation. It is definitely big. It is definitely bold. It is definitely in your face and is definitely unique. Uh, all the things that it should be. On top of it, I think that Evil Queen is such an easy topic for Kada because Kada just loves the spooky, ooky, ooky stuff anyway. So I love that she even decided to push herself and give you something else because she could have done this like the back of her head, but she was like, no, no, no. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in my own way. And that she did. All in all, super unique, super original and love everything every minute of it and definitely going to be a And for her third rags to riches look, 
Kate Minaj is coming out as an evil queen. She said that she's the evil stepsister and is definitely giving you that spooky vibes that Kata is known for. Now, the good part about Kata is that even though she's doing a second evil queen look, it is a very different interpretation than her first one. She's coming out in this black sleek dress with this gold lame sleeve fabric and this crown on behind her. All in all, I think this is well thought through, well made, and well designed. I wish that the fabric that she made her skirt with would have been a little bit more sparkly. I think this would have aided a lot had she had the same fabric that Arancha had, because that would have really just given you that extra shimmer. When it comes to her hair, I would have liked it to be a little bit taller, um, just so that you can get that little bit extra height to it. But all in all, this dress is really well made. We won't talk about the fact that she didn't actually make a ball gown and she made a dress, but hey, do with it what you will. At the end of the day, she looks fierce, she looks fabulous, and she is definitely getting a fab. Next up, it's Gothy Kendall, and Gothy Kendall for her Lady Prince Charming look is coming out in this sort of Louis the Fourteenth inspired look. She's got the little capelet on with this bodysuit underneath and this big old hair. I think that the concept and the thinking of it um, is quite intelligent. So if you know your history, uh, back in the day, men used to wear frills and men used to wear heels and men used to wear wigs. So this is definitely taking us back to the time where drag was a male sport and definitely part of the costume. I love the little reference of it. I also think it's really smart to be going into a realistic prince. I also like the fact that she went in more of like a realistic prince attire as opposed to like a, a character prince um, because it's still giving you character in a different way but more of a referential historical version. I love like this like polka dot fur piece on her shoulders and I love her headpiece. It's really giving you the drama. The part that I'm missing is I felt like it was all a little bit small and all a little bit quiet. I wish that for example she had done her jacket to be really long and a giant train. I think that that would have added that sort of drama to it and it would have given you more difference between that bodysuit underneath and the jacket. Right now they kind of both sit around the same height and therefore you're not really getting to see the bodysuit underneath that well. On top of it, I wish she would have added a little bit of a mustache, like a white curly mustache, I think would have just added that little masculine touch to it and still kept it camp with this bodysuit underneath. Overall, I think it's close. It's good. It's The thing is, it's nothing special and the competition this season is so fierce. And since the competition is so fierce, I'm going to have to go ahead and give this one a drag. <laughs> And for her second look, Gothy Kendall is coming out and giving you this black dress with this black and white hair. And she said that she is giving you a little bit of Cruella de Vil with a little bit of the Queen from Snow White. Now I get the reference to Cruella de Vil with the half black, half white hair. The Queen to Snow White, I think it's a little bit of a stretch. But the thing is that she looks really good. This shape on her is excellent. It's definitely proportionizing her like perfectly on top of it. It's definitely a much more fashion interpretation of a queen as opposed to a little bit more of these character building that some of these other queens will do. So it is really taken from a completely different page. I do wish that there was a little bit more to it. I would have loved a lot of some rhinestones all over it just to like Ump it up a little bit, but I think she was going for this more sort of like quiet luxury feeling, which probably works in editorial and probably looks in real life. But on the stage of RuPaul's Drag Race, I think more is more, more or less. I think it's a little bit weak for Evil Queen in a sense that for Evil Queen, I definitely want more of the queenness of it uh, and more of the evilness of it. But as a gown, it is superbly stunning. And as it is superbly stunning and fits the theme, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a bow. And for her third look, her rags to riches look, Gothic Kendall is coming out in this light pink dress with this pink and blonde hair. She said she's an underground goth girl going to a rave. And I'm thinking, where? You could have sold me on a lot of things, but underground rave in a pastel looking like that, Girl, have you ever been to a rave? 
Uh, this is not that vibe. The dress is a simple pink dress. Honestly, not that special. The good thing is, is that Agathe just knows the tricks and has paired it with this really over the top hair to kind of give you some drama. The problem I have with this is not even the shape of the dress, but the color. I am not a pink or a pastel person, but you can make it work. The problem is that Gothi's skin tone is so light that this washes her out. She definitely needed a little bit of more of that punchier color. I think it would have really helped. Had this been made in gold, it would have had a completely different vibe. Um, so I think that the color and the fabric really didn't help her. Since the dress is so simple, unfortunately, you really are looking at some of these details like the fabric. And that's sort of the problem with going too simple. Too simple, you're really uh, strained sometimes. And sometimes adding a whole bunch of shit to it is actually the better way to go. Um, you can hide a lot of things. And this one, she's not leaving herself a lot of room to hide. Personally, it's not my favorite. And I think she can do better. We've seen her do better. And that is why she's going to get a... Trap. <laughs> Next up, it's Marina Summers. And Marina Summers for her Lady Prince Charming look is coming out as the Prince of the Underwater. She's wearing this like teal blue suit with this flowing fabric and jet black hair. First things first, Marina Summers looks stunning. She is beat to the gods and she performs on the runway. She definitely sells you the fantasy. Now the question is, what fantasy is she selling me? And that's sort of the problem I have with this outfit. It is super well made, but there is a 0% chance you can tell me that this is a prince or male inspired look. What makes it male? The fact that it's got pants. And even at that, you see all of her thighs. They're more chaps than pants. She's got short hair. Whoop de doo I need more of the story. If she says she's a prince of underwater, why didn't she give me a little bit of more of that like Aquaman feeling? If she had a trident with her or if she had a combat boot, I think it would really help. On top of it, if she is a prince, why not have a little prince crown on her to really just sell the fantasy? I think that this one would have aided a lot with some accessories to really help tell the story. Right now, she just looks like a drag queen. And that's not a bad thing, but for this theme, it is a bad thing. So as stunning as she looks and as amazing as she looks, I really don't feel like she's following the theme at all. And so although it's not following the theme, I always say if you don't follow the theme, you better look good doing it. I'm definitely gonna have to give her a five. And for her second look, Marina Summers is coming out as Dubong. Or at least I think that's what she said, and I probably butchered the pronouncing, so I apologize to all the Filipinos who are watching this. She said that she is the evil queen from one of the characters that she grew up watching on TV. The first part I will say is that I like that she stuck to her water story. It went from Prince of the Water to Queen of the Water, so it all really works together from a cohesive standpoint. I also like that she decided not to go typical in sort of like dark queen and she definitely went into sort of this aquatic vibe and gave you this like weird spooky creature thing. I love that aspect of it. The problem is that many people are not going to understand her reference so she's got to make this character so over the top and so great that even if you don't understand the reference you would love it. And the character definitely feels a little bit like bloopy blop. Um, I'm not really vibing with it. The other thing that I feel like is hurting her a little bit with this look is the fact that this was done in a ball. Since it wasn't done in a ball, she kind of has to keep her face the exact same. And I think that this would have worked a lot better had she matched the makeup to her character to really like blend it in and give you that more of that creature vibe. But she probably just doesn't have the time between looks to like redo her entire mug. When it comes to the outfit itself, I think she could have dragged it up a little bit. You already see pieces of that with her shoe, which is a high heel and that she torn back into it, which I love. I wish she had done more to the uh, more at the top part. For example, imagine that they was just like all encrusted with diamonds or like if there were shells on her and they were all something just to give you that more that drag queen. So if you don't get the character, you still love the look. All in all, I love that she took a big swing because um, that's what I like to see in a drag queen. But I just don't feel like it landed for this one. And maybe if I knew the reference, it might have enjoyed it a little bit better. But since I don't, it's hard for me to, to, to go there. I'm going to go ahead and say drab. But I'm keeping my eyes on Miss Marina Summers.
Then for her rags to riches looks, Marina Summers is coming out in this mermaid style gown in this blue, dark blue and light blue. She said she's channeling the ocean to complete her trifecta of ocean aquatic looks. When she was in the workroom saying that she was gonna be working on a water look, I was like, I don't get it. But seeing these one by one, you can clearly see that Marina had a storyline and was sticking to it, and so she did. The funny story about this is that this is the third look, the one she made in the workroom, and to me, it is the best of the three. This is so elegant, so well put together, so well made, and she said this is her first dress she's made, and I'm like, what? You made that as your first dress? Mama, brava. Having seen this, I would have thought she knew how to sew, and she's made plenty of dresses. The, the silhouette is perfect for her. It is big. It is definitely giving you ball gown, but in its own individual way, and it's definitely giving you that aquatic, feel because it's in the runway. All in all, I love this dress and I love everything that she did about this. And it is definitely gonna be a fun. Next up, it's Theresa May. And Theresa May for her Lady Prince Charming look is coming out in this sort of purple pants and purple capelet. It's definitely giving you a little bit of Matador and a little bit of Salvador Dali. It is definitely camp and definitely kooky and definitely all over the place. I both love it and hate it because it definitely feels camp and it definitely feels like purposely bad. Um, and so I like that she's leaning into it, that she's saying, you know what, I'm gonna make this a character and I'm gonna make it a lot of fun. Once you start staring at it, you can see all the details. You start seeing the little rhinestones, you start seeing the embroidery, you start seeing beading, and then you realize, actually, this thing's got a lot of pieces to it and it's really intricate. I think this piece would look so much better in person when you can see it up close and see how it is made. Although it is not my specific cup of tea, I understand her direction and her thinking, but that's why for Miss Theresa May, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. For her Shevel Queen look, Theresa May is coming out and giving you a reinterpretation of her season three look. She's coming out as the Owl Queen. Now, if you remember her season for the dressmaking challenge, she came up with this kooky story of this owl and this garment. And at the time, I quite liked it. It was fun and campy. But she said, you know what? I'm going to give you that same concept, but elevate it to like the... 2.0 version, but personally, this ain't 2.0, this ain't 3.0, this is like 5.0. This is so well made. She's got all of the big sort of ostrich feathers coming out of it. She's got all of the diamonds. She's got all the rhinestones on her chest. She's got her giant staff that is now two times bigger and smoke coming out of it. And she's got the most gorgeous hair. You definitely see the reference, but you definitely see the elevation. And I love that she's going with like this dark purple because it's giving that evil queen Ursula vibes to it all. All in all, I love this look. I love that she's referencing herself. I love that it feels elevated. I love that it is uniquely her and it is gorgeous and it is 100% gonna be a fab. And for her rags to riches look, Theresa May is giving you this purple fantasy. She said she's giving you ugly stepsister going to the ball. And ugly stepsister is definitely what she's giving. I think that it is fun that she went with purple and that it made the storyline come through from first to last. When you're preparing for Drag Race, you don't know that this is going to be a theme or that it's going to be a ball, but I guess a lot of them figured it out based on the categories because they all carried it through and she did with this purple fabric as well. Now, the fabric she chose is awful and I think that that's what makes it look like ugly stepsister as opposed to, you know, young ingenue going to the ball. I think that the fabric choice was a miss, but something tells me that it was probably the only purple fabric and she was stuck on this concept that it was going to be purple. I do like that some of the detailing she added with this lace because it definitely references back to her first look and I like that she's referencing her second look with this empty cage. It kind of feels like oh the bird is dead and now uh, we only have the cage. As a garment it's definitely not elevated, definitely not really the best. Honestly, it was very much a miss to me. And that is why for Theresa May's third outfit, it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Oof, and that is it for the looks, you guys. Uh, so many looks, so many incredible looks, will I say. I gave a lot of high marks, I gave a lot of low marks. So who had my fabs and drabs of the week? My drab of the week for my Lady Prince Charming look goes to Arancha oh. Castilla La Mancha. 
And for the Evil Queen look, my drop of the week goes to Marina oh. Summers. And for my Rides to Riches Eleganza, my drop of the week goes to oh. Anaconda again. Oops. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fabs of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week for my Lady Prince Charming look goes to Let Calm Down. And for the Evil Queen look, my fab of the week goes to Jumpers Blonde. And my fab of the week for the Rags to Riches Eleganza is gonna go to Marina Summers. Y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts, my fabs, or drafts of the week? Well, let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series, and I'm getting really, really close. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.